right, let us continue Umineko. I heard some stuff from Jackie that made me terrified because she said I might end stream early. And when Jackie says something like that, that makes me scared. It makes me scared that something's gonna happen that I'm not gonna like. <laughs> Prayer circle for Elio. You are making me freak out so bad. <laughs> but yes, let us continue. I forgot what was happening. <laughs> I think they're all just talking in their rooms about like the rain and being a company guy, being a rich kid, all that shit. I figured it was the end of a chapter. Ah, okay. Well, making a company prosper really is a tough job. Money isn't the only thing that's important. I learned that well when studying under my father. Making a company prosper is like owning a castle and leading your subordinates. Yeah, you really got that kind of uh, complex over your, your employees. I definitely don't have a god complex over my employees. I definitely don't view myself as a king and them my servants or anything. My dad really loves reading about great leaders during the warring periods of Japan. A hobby that's probably influenced by the fact he shares Toyotomi Hideyoshi's name. Love the loud ass music. Oh, let me turn it down. You play with our lives, though. <laughs> Much of his philosophy on managing businesses comes from talking about them. Did you know? Takeda Shingen, who is feared as the leader of the strongest cavalry corps in the warring periods, started out with his troops in complete disarray and didn't have the kind of strong leadership necessary to utilize them all. I don't want to hear about Takeda Shingen. I want to hear about Okita Soji. I want to hear about the Shinsengumi. Is that true? That's a little unexpected. I don't mean the beginning and always kind. <laughs> Do you mean the, the the now and always? Or no, what was the, the other? Fuck, I, I messed up my joke. It's gonna reference the other Our Life game. <laughs> In order to unite his troops, Shingen showed his excellent leadership in many ways. For example, when a soldier succeeded well in battle, he would immediately honor them with a medal. Booba! <laughs> she do got the big booba, though. Normally, that kind of thing was put off until after the war, and they were all awarded at once. He continued this diligently while on the field of battle and immediately showing his appreciation for his troops' military exploits motivated them in an extremely significant fashion. Also, whenever one of his troops was brought down by an illness, he would be the first to rush up to them and care for them, and so on. I mean, this is, this is very riveting. Can we continue the plot, though? Takeda Shingen wasn't just the man who led the strongest cavalry corps in the war period. I feel like I've heard so much about the warring period in anime. I feel like I could probably take a history lesson in it <laughs> at this point. He was the person who cared the most for his troops throughout that era. And because he was that kind of person, all of his troops went along with him. I say that, but then again, no, <laughs> I probably would not. The truth was, Shannon had already heard this story several years ago. Yeah, I know. I, I, would, I would not pass. Yeah, don't use anime for history references. What? You mean I can't use Italia for, for world history quizzes? <laughs> but whenever a discussion of his father led to his sort of topic, George would always glow and look like he was having a great time. U.S.-U.K. shippers when they learn about the civil rights movement in history class. <laughs> so Shannon just smiled without interrupting, urging him to continue. 
Of course. In a capitalist world, money determines both your strength and the height of your fortifications. Oh god. We live in a society, Shannon. But you can't build up a castle or succeed in war by yourself. Such things can only be accomplished with the support of many subordinates who you underpay by borrowing their strength. After understanding this, when I look at my father's back, I realize how immature I am. I can clearly see how much competition he had to overcome before building up all he has now. George-sama, you truly look up to your father. I'm jealous. <laughs> oh, it should have been me, not him. It's not fair. Uh, sorry, that's not how I meant it. Uh, I'm sorry. That's not how I meant it either. The two of them awkwardly looked at their feet. What is Japan's crime rate? Zero, thanks to the <laughs> efforts of Kira-sama. Even though Light Yagami is an idiot, I will not get into this since this is outside the scope of this exam. <laughs> I'll be nice to you, Elio. Thank you. Shannon had no parents. To be honest, I would give you all my money if I was not woke AF. I saw a good stuff like it. <laughs> that is such a mood though. <laughs> but yeah, take take care of yourself. I'll, I'll be fine. But thank you. She had been brought up in an orphanage owned by Kinzo called the... I did not read that as Fukuin. I'm gonna be honest. I read that as Funkin. <laughs> Brought up in the orphanage called the Funkin House. <laughs> oh, good. oh, I think it has the same uh, kanji character that goes into Shannon and Cannon's name. Use for the hydrate. A fucking the best orphanage to live in. <laughs> fuck you, Elio. Fuck you. <laughs> Under the guidance of Kinzo, their honorary director, the orphanage offered members who excelled a chance for on-the-job serving experience. Fucking house. <laughs> yeah, welcome to my orphanage. It's called fucking house. It's cause we fuck all your life expectations away by poorly treating people. <laughs> That's so cursed. <laughs> if their efforts met with Kinzo's approval, they'd be able to leave the orphanage and work as servants for the Yoshido Mia family. This was considered to be the highest honor for those who lived in the orphanage. Servants from the Fukuin house. <laughs> I'll take names with the characters on in them while they say, Okay, I, I knew I recognized that kanji. It's a child labor, basically. Yeah, no wonder they call it fucking house. They're getting fucked over. Are they even getting paid for their time? Child labor in my 1980s? So, Shannon wasn't her real name. The same went for Kanon. To be fair, yeah, they get paid. Okay. But are they getting underpaid? <laughs> are they getting minimum wage? These are the real questions. All of the members of the Fukuin house were orphans. At least, they were all people who had been separated from their parents under special circumstances. Because of this, the orphans had been taught to think of each other as their only family. That's why it seemed so natural to both of them when Shannon called Cannon his sister. Aww. And while both Shannon and Cannon were working in the mansion today, there were several other servants possessing the own character in their names, such as Manon and Lennon, who also often worked in a rotation schedule. Is that is that Koi? I might I I might not be recognizing the kanji correctly, but that looks like like I or, or Koi's kanji. However, there were not many servants who stayed with the Yoshida Mia family for long. Oh, do they all get killed? 
I can't recognize love either. <laughs> Also, hold on. Let me let me reset my colors. I'm not I'm not playing lobotomy corp anymore. It was standard for them to quit after three years. So you could probably say that Shannon, who had been working for ten years, was a notable exception to the rule. Damn. Yeah, we, we died in Lobotomy Corporation. I restarted, but yeah. Everyone died. Damn, I missed my funeral. Yeah, there was like a... There's like a, a thing that happened where like a bunch of monsters got spawned. And... <laughs> we had to... Fight them and everyone died. The end. Working as a servant for the Ushida Mia family was a heavy burden to bear, but the pay wasn't bad at all. <laughs> so cute. <laughs> Thank you. No, I didn't want to die without Lin. <laughs> I'm sorry. How did I die? I want to know. You got attacked by leeches. What I heard from my AirPods very violently. Yeah, they were like bloody leeches and they killed everyone. Working for a full three years would earn more than what we needed to enter mainstream society. Jesus, really? That was why, even though the orphans realized what a harsh task work working for the Yoshida Mia family was, they still hoped to be accepted. Did I also die violently then? What do you think, buddy? <laughs> Maybe the fact that Shannon managed to continue working for 10 years wasn't because she had more willpower than the other servers. Maybe she just wants to stay there. Maybe she'd gotten stuck working for 10 years because she didn't have the courage to say she wanted to quit. Oh, that's a mood. Kinzo couldn't even trust his own blood relatives. And these excellent servants sent from the Fukuin house were the only ones he could rely on. Because of that, Kinzo would sometimes allow them to wear the family crest. A servant's under his direct control. Now the more closer up. Oh! I think Shannon and Cannon both have that. Uh, um, you've been working here for almost 10 years now, right? At least the wages aren't bad at all, lol. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's good. You must have saved up a lot of money by now. I wonder. It's not like there's anything in particular I'd like to buy. After all, a few million yen isn't enough to live off for the rest of your life. Oh, would you I post fan art? Yeah, uh, if you go to the Discord, uh, there should be a channel for uh, fan art of uh, me or the games I play. Uh, in Art Elio is art for me. And then art general is just like any art that you do just in general. So yeah. And if not that, if you have like a, a Twitter or anything, you can link me to it and I can show it. Yeah. So the reason you've been working all this time wasn't to hit some target sum? <laughs> yes, that's right. <laughs> is she working here because she's in love with George? <laughs> Oh, hello! Yo. Hi there, Layla! How's it going? Yeah, that sure is a maid, alright. Yeah, she got the badonky donks. I think Twy died first and we all started panicking. Yep, I know at least him, Overtaker, and I think Linux died for sure before I restarted. <laughs> oh, so it wasn't Elio? I, I definitely panicked. I don't wanna, I don't wanna lose my mule. Wait, is it normal we see the Discord in the back? Oh, shoot! No, that is not normal. Oop. Let me get rid of that. <laughs> Probably because I brought up Discord. I had that ready for... <laughs> for art time. <laughs> I have nowhere to go outside this mansion. 
And I have been getting along well with Milady and the other young servants. What about go to cheese? Fuck that dude. Get him fired. Use your 10 years of uh, seniority to get him fired. The madam does scold me sometimes, but caring for the roses and cleaning the mansion is fun. <laughs> oh, good morning and happy Canada Day. Oh, happy Canada Day! You guys having like little parties for Canada Day or anything? But that can't be your entire life, Shannon Chan. No, Sayo Chan. <gasps> oh, he gives her a nickname. Um, is that her real name? Shannon cast her eyes downwards when she heard her real name. There's fireworks, but I can't be bothered. <laughs> Relatable. Parties? Huh? <laughs> People go to parties? She understood what George was trying to say and fell silent. There's something I've learned as I continue to study, even after becoming an adult and a full-fledged member of society. A human's life is not as monotonous or as short as we thought when we were kids. All school-aged kids have certain fears they can't shake. Wait, Jackie, is that why you said Elio would end stream? Oh, because I'm upset about Shannon. <laughs> They wonder whether they'll live the rest of their lives like sleepy classes after a modernist and boring school day. Oh, well, what's this redeem? Oh, <laughs> beat him. Give me one second. <laughs> Alright, there, there's your feet. There's your feet. <laughs> Do you like my feet? <laughs> I must go. So have fun with Neko Umi. I'll see you later, Layla. Thanks for popping in. Nice. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> Spending their time in a carefree laziness without anything interesting happening until it's all over. Looking respectfully. <laughs> However, life's only like that for underage students. Compared to a human's life, the time they spend as students is nothing more than a blink of the eye. A period where they break through the shells of their immaturity. The inside of the shell might be a hot, suffocating, and boring world. But the world beyond that shell is vast and filled with limitless possibilities. Even Glasses Boy is checking it out. Oh, he, he is. <laughs> Yeah you... yeah, you like it? <laughs> so far, your life has been trapped inside the shell called Shannon. I think you're under the mistaken impression that your life will continue like this forever. Shannon couldn't deny those words. She'd been unable to harbor any clear doubts about her lifestyle. And since she never had any hope for, or goals for changing herself, she lazily continued living the way she always had. And if asked whether this life was satisfying, she wouldn't have been able to nod. Wait, what? Leave this place! You've been working for like 10 years! You got like buku bucks from working here! Go. If, you're, if your life's not satisfying, go make it satisfying. You got this, Shannon. Hello, Star. Oh, hi there, Final Music. How's it going? Hello, hello. Buy your happiness, Shannon. You can do it. She may have been intentionally averting her eyes from the truth. Without George's admonishments, she would have continued pretending. Not to notice, as her real life slipped away bit by bit, neglected. No! George Sama? Is it wrong for me to continue living this way? Yeah, it is. Yes, Shannon, you have good wages. You can afford it. And 
why are you telling her it's wrong for her to continue living like this? If she wants to live like this, let her live like it. I'm about to punch George. Oh, and by the way, didn't you break one of our rules just now? The fuck? George immediately gave a strict answer, then broke out into a mischievous smile. Bura? Shannon already knew what she was being chided for, and she hung her head again, apparently embarrassed. <laughs> Doing good, thank you. Oh, nice! Good, good! Can you promise not to use Samo? <laughs> I'm sorry, I need a... No! No, Shannon's my waifu! Ugh. It should've been me! Not him! It's not fair! You promise not to use Soma when the two of us are alone here. This, this guy better drop dead fast. Cucked by George of all people. Bruh. God, I got cucked by this nerd. I, I couldn't obey that as a promise. But if it was an order, I would have to obey it. <laughs> Because I'm furniture. No! Then it's an order. <laughs> Gonna punch this guy. Um, yes. Certainly, George son. First Shiloh, now George. Thank you for the head pats. Don't punch him out of jealousy. Oh, I will. I'm jealous as fuck. Elio cannot escape pain in any VN. What the hell? <laughs> I can never have the maid love me. Yes, that's fine, Sayo-chan. George smiled at Shannon. No, Sayo. To praise her small act of bravery. The short exchange alone made it clear how far back their relationship must have stretched. <laughs> Should have been me! For a long while, the two talked as if the weather raging about them didn't even enter their thoughts. They talked about many memories they'd built during their relationship that no one knew about. Every once in a while, a flash of lightning would attempt to interrupt them, but... This couldn't sully neither the roses nor the time they spent blushing at each other. No! I can give her the hep as overtaker. Th that's right. I have something I wanted to show you. What are you gonna show her? You're not gonna murder her, are you? I swear to fucking god, don't you look at me with your your foggy ass glasses. Evil! Evil! What, what could it be? George, who had been speaking eloquently, suddenly started the stutter. Watching him, Shannon seemed to guess something. George timidly searched through his pockets. What's that in your hands? A knife! No! Something got caught in the depths of his pocket, and just like the stuttering George, it took a little while to get it out. What are you doing? No! That's even worse! That's even worse! No! Uh -huh. It was a very small box. Is that a knife in your pocket? Or are you happy to see me? Yes. Huh? <laughs> Don't propose. You rather she die than her getting married? It should have been me. Not him. <laughs> it's not fair. It really isn't fair.
here. What the fuck? Why are you doing this to me? <laughs> Let me go. A small box covered in a deep blue velvet. <laughs> that peculiar shape was enough to tell anyone what was resting inside. Yeah, it better not be a fucking ring. Don't you put a ring on it. Shannon had prepared her heart somewhat, certain beforehand that this was what he'd been planning. No! But even so, when she actually saw it, she couldn't avoid blushing once way. Stop it! <laughs> George opened the small box, took something out, and held it out for Shannon to take. I want you to take this. I, I, um, couldn't accept something so valuable. You can't take it? <laughs> Reject him! Be his ass! N no, um, I'm unworthy of such a thing. No, you are worthy, Shannon. You are worthy of love. George isn't worthy of love, though. Please don't, please don't accept his proposal. Please accept my proposal, please. Sayo, this isn't a request. Burn, you can't be forcing someone to marry you. Uh, fucking, oh, I hate this. It's an order. You can't order someone to marry you. Take this ring. No. Okay. <laughs> There's no consent! This is a consentless marriage. Uh, 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 if it's an order, I cannot disobey. You can disobey, Shannon. Leave his ass. Leave this island. Start a new life with me, preferably. Yeah, that's right. Well done. <laughs> Okay, VNs hate you this week. Yeah, what the hell? Why why are they doing this to me? First for Shiloh, now this? What the fuck? Shannon, not wanting to show her bright red face, timidly accepted the ring from George's hand while still staring at the ground. Alright, sorry, I was looking at my old Pokemon card prices. I wish that were me right now. Wish I was doing anything but this. That ring wasn't a simple accessory. <laughs> it was a noble object. Meant since ancient times to be offered to a special woman under certain friends. <laughs> this fucker gave her the, the blue feather of happiness. <laughs> Therefore, while George could order her to take it, he could not order anything beyond that. Anything beyond that would depend, not on an order, but on Shannon's, no, Sayo's own will. You shouldn't even order her to take it! That sends the message that she accepts, bro! So, from here on, I'm not ordering you anymore. Sayo, I want you to give me your answer by tomorrow, without using words. Do you understand? Without using words? How is she supposed to accept without words? Excuse moi uh, how should I? I won't order you any further, so this isn't an order. But a ring is something you put on your finger, after all. <laughs> I hate this dude. Whenever his glasses fog up, I want to punch him so bad. If you like it, you can just put it on any finger you choose. 100% this guy is dead. It don't matter. That was a death lie. I hope he's dead. Shannon had only pretended not to know. <laughs> if not from Beatrice, then from Elio. <laughs> <laughs> for real, for real. About to book myself a flight to the Yoshida Mia island and shoot him in the head. She already understood what he wanted her to do. Elio 100% being petty. <laughs> 
Should have been me, not him. It's unfair. But she was standing at a huge crossroads for her life. Look how late it's gotten. What did you make? When a character is a murderer, oh dear, oh dear, gorgeous. When a character proposes to a maid, you fucking donkey. <laughs> Truth. God. Let's call it a day. As he should. <laughs> George turned away from Shannon, acting just a bit bluntly. I could probably order you to wear it on your left hand. Stop ordering her! This is so... This is so wrong! Like, I'm not just saying that as someone that's upset over George and Shannon. Stop ordering her to do things! Let her choose! You might be timid and dependent enough to actually obey that kind of order. Can you stop? But I want at least this last step to be done by your own will, Sayo. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Round of applause for this guy for letting the girl actually give consent. Do you deserve a, a trophy for that? Understand? Y yes. So that's my order. Shut the hell up. As he should. <laughs> I want you to think about it well tonight and show me your answer tomorrow. Show? Shannon nodded back. What are you expecting her to do? <laughs> Most people hate George because of how the way he proposes to Shannon feels scummy. Elio hates George because he's crying for Shannon to leave him because he'll treat her better. Yeah, I, I know I'm I know I'm definitely you know, I'm definitely being petty over George and Shannon right now, but like, this is not, this is not how you propose to someone. This just reeks of power imbalance, unconsensual, like, oh, I'm ordering you to take me this, and you need to show me your answer tomorrow. Like, ugh. that's just, that's just bad. And I know, I know I am speaking from a position that is very upset at George because I like Shannon, but even if I was not involved in this situation at all, if I saw someone that was like, I order you to take this ring and show me your answer tomorrow, this is an order. What? Shannon nodded back. Today was the culmination of their many days spent together. The sheer level of pettiness is hilarious. <laughs> wow, great job, bro. Yeah, the bro gave her consent at the very end. Congrats. This moment certainly hadn't come as a surprise to Shannon. We should be getting back to the guest house soon. If we take any longer, we'll make everyone worry about us. Oh, um... I'm sorry, I... Um, I just remembered something I had to do in the mansion, so, uh... I have to go back to the mansion. Uh, at a time like this? Is that true? Bro, leave her alone! She needs some time to think! George stared into Shannon's face as he laughed mischievously. Bro, I'm about to punch this guy's glasses. <laughs> Break his glasses off of his face. He definitely saw through Shannon's lie. Elio spitefully reads the rest of the VN to see if George dies a horrible death, please. However, when he saw how she felt, he could sort of understand that she might be so embarrassed that she'd want to be alone. So, because George realized the meaning behind Shannon's lie, he accepted it. Yeah, leave her alone! Give her some time... <laughs> ...yourself. God, that, that transition always scares me. <laughs> You're an asshole. He's a huge asshole! Like, what the hell, George? 
Okay, so now it's 11 o'clock. Shannon entered the entrance hall to the mansion with a tottering gait. A mixture of exultation and uncertainty gave her a feeling that she couldn't easily describe. It swelled up in her chest until it felt like she was about to burst. After stopping for a second in front of the servant room to take a deep breath and calm her heart, she opened the door. Inside, Goda, who had been ordered to take the midnight shift at the mansion tonight, was absorbed in a worn-out crossword puzzle magazine. So yeah, I was like 25% expecting you to rage quit and end there. <laughs> you know me too well, Jackie. <laughs> If he hadn't started 30 minutes ago, he would have quit. Yeah. Yeah, let me, let me go on my go on my BRB. We're, uh, we're switching games. Switching games right now. <laughs> yeah, let, let's let's go play uh let's go play Final Fantasy 7 now. <laughs> um Genji-sama told me to come and help you. Ah, is that so? That's a relief. I was just about to go check that the mansion was fully locked up, but I felt uneasy about leaving this room unmanned. After all, Kurosama and the others' meeting looks as though it will continue for quite some time. They might request some tea at any moment. Bro, I hate this guy. <laughs> That's true. Then what shall we do? Should I watch over? Question, you playing Rehab Friday with Henry Huxley? I do really want to play the game whenever it comes out. Has a has Etherine announced a release for it yet? In that case, forgive me, Shannon san but I'll ask that you control the mansion. I'll stay here, awaiting the family's orders. Big Hello Charlotte fans around here, FYI, yeah. <laughs> We're the Hello Charlotte community. <laughs> no, uh, they haven't announced it yet, damn. I hope it comes out this year. I really hope it comes out this year. Y yes. What is that sound? I guess that's the seagulls. Shannon was slightly disgusted. Even though she'd come here to help out as a favor, she was casually being forced to do the job of the person actually on duty. Yeah, fuck this dude! Furthermore, after one-sidedly forcing that task on her, Goda returned to his magazine once again and became immersed in his crossword puzzle. Do your freaking job, Goda! I hate this guy! Yeah, fuck Goda! Me and my homies hate Goda, like... Whoa. And then, like, if, if something happens, he'll, like, blame it on Shannon. Like, oh, I asked Shannon to do the job, so it was her fault if something if it was fucked up. Shannon bowed her head as a token sign of respect for her elder, then left the room to patrol the mansion side. Then there's Elio making he Hello Charlotte videos. Sips drink nervously because I still need to work on those images for the vid. <laughs> it's all good. Take your time, Jackie. <laughs> Thanks to her being a bit ticked off, she managed to suppress the floaty feeling she'd been having until just now. Yeah, do your job! just goes and plays a crossword puzzle, my god. Anyway, she couldn't let Genji or Kanon see her looking like this. She wanted a little time to herself until her heart calmed down, so maybe going on patrol wouldn't be so bad. She began to hear the tumultuous voices of the family discussion coming from the dining hall. Someone was speaking at great length, only to be interrupted by someone else. 
Goda looks like the kind of shitty butler who is a meanie bitch who gets the good eye by spreading false rumors. Yeah, that does sound like Goda. The second person also began to speak in a very long, drawn-out fashion, until yet another person interrupted. They kept on repeating. It was as though their displeasure was seeping out through their voices. She had been told to go to the guest house, so it would be bad if Kraus discovered her. Thinking this, Shannon dashed past the dining hall. Then she went along a prearranged route through the dark mansion, checking that all the locks were secure. She walked down the hall, checking each window. There were no humans on Nokanjima other than those connected to the family, so locking up didn't really serve much of a purpose. No one had been in the habit of locking up at the Yoshida Mia head family, at least not until Natsu had scolded them for being careless. Yeah, what, what if the, the animal creatures sneak in at night? The metal fixtures on the windows were ice cold, and as she checked them one by one, the glow in her heart seemed to cool down. Yeah, what if you get visited by Tutter from Baron the Big Blue House? Then you'll rule the day. Eh? Butterflies? At that time, she thought she saw something twinkling across the hall. Twinkling? How could anything be twinkling through the darkness of the hall? She figured she must have been imagining it, but she still held her breath. Yeah, what the fuck? Yeah, what? Those butterflies? Grasping a curtain, she fearfully gazed down the hall. However, other than the occasional crack of thunder brightening the hallway, she was unable to glimpse any flicker again. This music is making me worry. Must have been her imagination after all. Maybe her heart was so agitated that she'd seen something that didn't even exist. Shannon went back to checking the windows. I may have misinterpreted whose death flag that was. Please don't die, Shannon! Please have it be George's death flag! However, a certain unnerving memory was resurrected in the back of her mind. I was thinking the same joy. No, please! Here's that ghost story, which had been passed down amongst the servants who served the Yoshida Mia head family. The mansion had two different masters, one of the day and one of the night. Beatrice, the master of the night, would sometimes fly around the mansion in the form of sparkling butterflies. <gasps> oh shit. Please do not die, please, please! That was the story. Come to think of it, didn't Kanon Kun once say he'd seen it with his own eyes? Though he got sulky when I said he must have imagined it and refused to believe him. Could it possibly be true? The roar of the thunder gave no answer. Please be okay, baby girl. Best case scenario, she's the villain. <laughs> please be the villain, Shannon. Please don't die. Well, there's the Beatrice. Uh oh. Worst case scenario. Dun, 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 dun. Shannon gets married and then dies. No! Beautiful portrait. Please. Please don't die. Oh, 
Oh, what's this music? Okay, she's still alive. Okay, so is this like showing where everyone's at? Before someone dies or something? He's in the void. <laughs> Fucking dead. The doctor's dead. It's part of the anime opening that shows all of the characters. <laughs> Oh, all of the pieces are in place. What will you see on the game board? I just got an achievement that said that. Ooh! Let the murder party begin! No! Wait, really? <laughs> Guess that's good for Shannon. <laughs> Please. Kill George. Don't kill Shannon. It's morning. There's gonna be a corpse, isn't there? Good morning. Dawn of the second day. October 5th, 1986. Genji tightened his bow tie and looked outside through a crack in the curtains. Maybe the rain had died down a tiny bit since the previous night. Is it morning or morning? Yes. But the thick green clouds didn't seem like they'd be letting any trace of the morning sun get by. The morning was dim and far from refreshing. Also, give me one second. I just saw something. Okay, we're good. Thank you, Final Fantasy 13. It seems it will last all day after all. Sorry for keeping you waiting, Genji Sama. Kanon finished checking his appearance and exited the washroom. On their normal schedule, it was rare for anyone to have to suffer going straight from a midnight shift to an early morning shift. They were on a special schedule for the two days of the family conference. However, unless the typhoon passed today, the relative stay on this island would last until tomorrow. And Kanon thought it best to be prepared for the special schedule to last an extra day. The two of them left the guest house, opening their umbrellas. The rose garden had been devastated by the wind and rain on the previous night. Even though they'd spent several days making it beautiful to welcome the guests, one stormy night was enough to ruin it. Come on, side. The two headed for the mansion. I'm so nervous. <laughs> They were supposed to meet up with Goda and prepare breakfast. Goda was such a perfectionist that he had probably already woken up and was probably already preparing a breakfast as exquisite and elegant as glasswork. They reached the overhang by the entrance to the mansion and folded up their umbrellas. <laughs> that emote. <laughs> Genji took a bundle of several keys from his pocket and unlocked the front door. Yoshidamiya Family Mansion was the only thing on Rokunjima, so in the past, they hadn't been in the habit of locking up. <laughs> However, Natsuhi had ordered that the mansion be locked up from midnight to early morning. Ever since then, unlocking the door in the early morning had become part of the servant's morning shift. 
This task had been given to Genji and Kanon so that Gota could start preparing breakfast as soon as he woke up. Where's the door locked? Because Shannon was supposed to lock it. If it's not locked, then that's a bad sign. A silence had fallen in the mansion, giving the impression that the mansion itself was still asleep. Well then, let us begin the morning chores. Yes, sir. Two of them split up and began opening the curtains throughout the mansion. If the curtains stayed closed, the mansion would remain enveloped in faint darkness, as though it was still trapped in the previous night. Looks like it was locked. Okay, that's good. Following a well-rehearsed procedure, Conan went around the mansion, opening the curtains for one window after another, without having to retrace his steps once. Even with this horrible weather, drawing the curtains made it feel just a little bit like morning. While doing that, he passed in front of the kitchen. Even though he hadn't smelled anything yet, his stomach started aching for some of Goda's prize cookie. Yo, what if Goda's dead? That'd be nice. Good morning. Hmm? He tried to greet Goda, who should have been getting breakfast ready, but Goda was nowhere to be seen. Is Goda dead? The kitchen was darkly lit, and not only were the curtains not open, but the fan wasn't even running. It was still cold, without any trace of a fire being lit, so of course there were no signs of breakfast being made either. Oop, looks like something happened, yeah. <laughs> Though, it would have been inexcusable. Perhaps go to overslept. Nah, him? Nah, he's dead. Please be dead. <laughs> Pause, champ. <laughs> Even servants are only human. They sometimes sleep in and show up late. In the rare case that such a thing happens, it's part of a servant's code to hide the unsightly scene before anyone notices. Smoothly cover it up. And make sure the family never even realizes that anything has gone wrong. Conan took the receiver of the phone that had been fitted to the wall and dialed the number for the extension line in the servant's sleeping room. Hmm? He couldn't hear that characteristic sound of a dial to- Oh! So the phones are down. Conan tried picking up the receiver again, but even so, he couldn't hear the usual dial tone. Hmm, I decayed. That dude loves showing off. I decay if he'd sleep in, yeah. Doesn't sound like Goda to me. Probably would set like 5 million alarms. <laughs> I tried dialing again, but it had no apparent effect. Could the lightning last night have damaged some machine, breaking the extension line? The equipment in this mansion was all worn out. Conan fully understood that even the smallest thing could have caused it to break down. He gave up trying to wake Goda with the phone and dashed over to the servant's sleeping room. But is Goda there? How long has it been since I stopped sleeping and started lazily staring up at the ceiling? That vague sense of awakening was part of Natsuhi's usual morning experience. She always slept lightly, and she couldn't sleep at all without medicine. Okay, so Natsuhi's not dead. I had a theory that she was gonna go and kill someone or get killed, so... I guess she's okay now. To Natsuhi, sleep was definitely not a happy thing. When she looked outside, she saw that it was still pouring. If she hadn't sensed a tiny amount of light, she might have mistakenly thought it was still the previous night. She herself was one of the hosts, so she mustn't wake up later than her guests. Urging herself on, she raised up her body, which still hadn't completely recovered from yesterday's weariness. No one would torment her as long as she remained inside this room. And her headache wouldn't get any worse here. This room was the only place she could find peace. So, when she left, it meant returning to the world where her husband's siblings kept trying to stab each other in the back. Well, mood Nazi! <laughs> yeah. 
family be like, why don't you leave your room? <laughs> this is the exact... This is the mood. <laughs> in that case, wouldn't it be better to just stay locked up in this room forever? Right? That ridiculous notion brought a bitter smile to Natsuhi's face. Yeah, this girl's going through it. She needs to get, like, a divorce or something. Like, this girl needs a better life. She's not She's not a good person, I'm gonna say that. Natsuhi's not a perfect person, but... She's going through it. She needs... She deserves better. She was starting to sound like Kingzo. Damn, that's rough. <laughs> She can only. She often complained about Kinzo staying locked up in his own room and refusing to attend to everyone else. The truth was that she longed to do the same. Maybe she's she'd chill more if she lived in better circumstances. I decay. Yeah, I mean, this whole situation does sound very uh stressful. So if she didn't have to worry about the Yoshida Mia family, I think she'd be a bit better. Natsuya gave her head a small shake, and her fantasy was replaced by the reawakening of her usual headache. Too soon? <laughs> Help! <laughs> she needs someone better like George. Shut up! <laughs> Why I oughta... If Beatrice didn't get to him, I'll get to him. When she reached for the doorknob, trying to leave the room, her hand touched the scorpion charm that she had hung from it before going to sleep the previous night. Oh, she actually hung it up? It was Maria's charm, which Natsuhi had received from Jessica. Didn't Jessica say something about it having the power to repel magic, telling her to hang it from her doorknob? Oh! Maybe only people that had that don't get killed then. Maybe it was thanks to the charm that at least this room had been protected from the malice of her husband's siblings. As she thought this, her mood began to get a little more cheerful. I wonder if I have Jessica to thank for the little bit of peaceful sleep I managed to receive. Then Natsuhi remembered. That's right, last night. I promised Jessica that I'd give her a charm of my own in exchange for this one, didn't I? Natsi opened a drawer on her dresser and took out an antique accessory case that she had treasured when she was a child. Inside, there were many small objects that Natsi had thought were valuable at the time. From midst, though, she pulled out a red pouch. Inside was a small round mirror, about 10 centimeters across. That's a bit specific. It looked quite old, but the design on the back of the mirror was very ornate, and it felt like something with historical value. Never lose your pocket mirror, my daughter. <laughs> At the very least, it seemed much more authentic than the other charm, which looked like a plastic scorpion keychain. She had heard that this was a spiritual mirror for warding off evil spirits. And she had been given it specifically by her grandmother when her grandfather's mementos had been distributed. <laughs> it had been believed since long ago that a strange power resided in this mirror. Angel? Perhaps people thought it could reflect calamity and malice in the same way it reflected light. I didn't care if they'll mention Natsuhi's family background before episode 5. Do you want a fun fact about it? Yeah, sure! Natsuhi returned the mirror to its pouch. It would probably be a fitting object to hand over to Jessica. Mm. I don't know, I can't hate Natsuhi. I... I kinda really like her. Just as she was placing it in her pocket, the sound of someone knocking on the door suddenly echoed throughout the room. Yes? Good morning, madam. It is Genji. My apologies for waking you so early. I am coming now. What is it? No servant had ever come to her this early in the morning, nor had they come to wake her in person. Oh, so Natsuhi came from a family of Shinto priests. Ooh. 
I wonder if maybe she has like a connect. Well, probably not. I was thinking of like Higurashi for a second, but nah. <laughs> That's like a completely different era. Perhaps something bad had happened. Maybe some fatal oversight had been made while preparing breakfast. Something that would shame the household in front of their guests. Let's say you took a deep breath in anticipation for whatever trouble she was about to hear of. When she opened the door, Genji once again gave a morning greeting while bowing deeply. Matsuhi tentatively responded. Good morning. Did something happen? Yeah, Higurashi takes place three years before Umineko. Mmm, okay. My apologies. It would seem that the telephones have broken down due to the lighting last night. The extension telephone isn't working, so please forgive my coming to see you directly. Yeah, only three years. Yeah, I would have thought it'd be like quite a few years, but that's true. Higurashi also took place in like 70s, 80s. The extension telephone isn't working. What? What year does Kikonia take place? And that will be troublesome. Will it be possible to fix it? I am afraid we do not know the location of the damage. Later on, I would like to call in an expert and have him repair it. Does that mean we'll be unable to have it repaired until after the typhoon passes? Kikonia takes place way far in the future, which surprised me. Really? It looked kind of steampunky to me, but... I mean, I don't know too much about Kikonia. Then it will remain broken down for the duration of our guest's stay. Will that hamper our efforts to care for our guests? We will do all we can to ensure there are no problems. Very well. I'm counting on you to make sure we have no blunders. Matsi let out a small sigh of relief. She'd been prepared for the worst, but damage to the telephones wasn't the kind of trouble she was worried about. Then again, even this would probably be enough to spark sarcasm from Ava. Matsu gave her head a light shake. Are the preparations for breakfast proceeding well? As to that, we haven't been able to find Gota. The arrangements for breakfast have yet to be carried out. What did you say? Natsi was indignant. Basically, it takes place years after World War III and how the atomic bombs drastically affected the Earth and they're on the brink of World War IV. Jesus. God damn. To her, this was a much bigger problem than the phone's not working. And despite that, this piece of information was the part that had been postponed. Why did everything go well most of the time, and then come to something like this when the relatives were visiting? Natsu put her hand to her forehead and shook her head. Well, I suppose he slept in. At any rate, just see to it that someone hurries up and prepares breakfast. I don't care who. What? Natsu exited into the hall and turned around for a second to close the door to her room. The creepy thing she saw there silenced her completely. Eh? It was an unpleasant sight, as though someone had dipped their fingers in a reddish-black liquid and scratched at the door around the doorknob. Huh? It was probably some sort of awful prank. So, like, someone uh, trying to get through the door, like, scraping up the door until, like, their fingers bleed? Arranged by some person who wanted to make it look as though they tried to force the door with bloody hands. What, what sort of prank is this? I still need to finish Kikonia. 
But I know I'm slowly approaching the point of where people start dying. Oh boy. <laughs> Just girly things. <laughs> How awful. I also just noticed it as I came to call you. I will clean it later. But perhaps this is a vulgar joke by one of the guests. Disgusting. Truly disgusting. Who in the world would pull such a childish and disgusting prank? Maria. Nazi had a pretty good idea, but of course there was no proof. So, even if she pushed the issue, it would just seem as though she was making a fuss about nothing. In fact, it would surely be better to act as though she hadn't even realized that such a prank had been played on her. Hmm, I'm sure these blood marks aren't anything suspicious. <laughs> yeah, just, just doing little markers, you know, like when you get taller. Stuff like that. No biggie. Natsu gave the order to have it cleaned and headed off to the parlor with a squeak of her heels. Maria went buck wild with the paint godspeed. <laughs> she need to have some fun. Ooh. When Natsu and Genji arrived in the parlor, Ava and Hideyoshi were already there. Good morning, everyone. Morning, Nazi-san. I heard Goda-san would be making us breakfast, too. My stomach's been getting all excited since I woke up. <laughs> After all, it seems food is all you can look forward to at the head family household. <gasps> Jesus Christ, Ava! Already coming out swinging. <laughs> I'm pleased to see that you too are in high spirits so early in the morning, Ava-san. With a weary expression, Natsuhi returned to Ava's gaze, which was fiercely competitive, despite the early hour. Then Kanon jogged in. She ain't wrong, but damn! <laughs> Yo, what the fuck? That's like the first thing she said this morning, too. Jesus Christ! After bowing an apology to the relatives for running inside the mansion, he noticed Genji and told him something in a small voice. Kanon. Have you still not found Goda? My apologies, madam. I went all over the inside of the mansion and the guest house, but I still haven't found him. Ava literally just woke up and chose violence, damn. <laughs> Where in the world has he gone? I hope he went six inches under. At any rate, breakfast is a higher priority than finding Goda right now. See to it immediately. Yes. Kanon glanced at Genji. It seemed he had something else to report, but was uncertain whether or not the words should come from him. Goda is dead. Crab party. Let's fucking go. Genji nodded and decided to give the report himself. It better just be Goda that's dead. It better not be Shannon. Madam. It is not only Goda. Your husband is also nowhere to be on Fountain Cross? Okay, okay, I can still, I can still crab party on that. Let's fucking go, Cross is dead. My husband? Yes. Even before visiting you, I went to his room to tell him that breakfast wasn't being prepared. But I did not find him there. Furthermore, he is not the only one missing. Rudolph Salma, his wife, and Rosa Salma are nowhere to be found. I can still crap party to this. Let's go. The spook music of many. <laughs> I 
I mean, I would have preferred to punch Rosa in the face myself, but, you know, country girls make do. Not in the guest house, nor the mansion. Yes. They are not in their rooms in the guest house either. When she'd heard that Goda alone was missing, she assumed he had slept in or was loafing around somewhere. However, now that she'd learned that several of the relatives were also nowhere to be seen, she began to take a slightly more optimistic view. Could last night's family conference have continued all night, up until the present moment? If so, they might have wanted to cool their heads after being shut in a stuffy room. Going out for walks on their own through the rain. That doesn't sound normal though, most people don't like taking walks through rain. The part about cooling their heads really sounded like something Cross would say. Goda had probably been summoned to accompany them and aid them in some way. Oh, thank you for the hydrate monkey! I am out of water, so I will be... about that. I'm back. <clears throat> Goda had probably been summoned to accompany them and aid them in some way. Goda was not a man who lost track of time. Popping in to make you drink water and then I'm off again, Mo. <laughs> Thank you so much, Maliki. I hope you have a good day. <laughs> Thank you for watering me. <laughs> He had to understand that preparations for breakfast would be hindered if he did not return. However, maybe the family conference had continued until this very moment. With an atmosphere that would make it hard for anyone to slip out. Yes, that theory would be quite convincing for Natsuhi. She remembered the illusion she felt that morning, as though the previous night had never ended. You too! <laughs> Thank you! When she learned that the feeling wasn't just an illusion, she once again took a deep, wary breath. After all, that banquet of filthy vultures circling Kinzo's property was still going on. Perhaps they're still discussing the inheritance somewhere in the garden, or maybe the beach. At any rate, if we don't call Goda back, we'll never be able to begin preparations for breakfast. So, what are you saying? Are Nissan and the rest still continuing the discussion? 
Yeah, if, if that was the case, why would Ava be here? Wouldn't she still want to be in on that since she is like a, a head of family? She had planned to say it in a small voice, but Hideyoshi overheard Natsu and managed to grasp the situation. <laughs> Nissan and Rudolph sure are tough. Maybe it's just youth in Rose's case. Just a bit after midnight, the two of us were so tired that we headed back to bed. Though I do remember that Nissan and the rest were still having a heated discussion at that point. Men certainly are unpleasant when they get all fired up. Natsuhi snorted, her face still blank. Kanan, search outside. If you find Goda, tell him to return immediately and begin preparing breakfast. Certainly. Natsuhi and Nissan, we don't know for sure that they're outside, do we? Couldn't they also be inside Father's study? Why would he let them inside, though? Ah, see, that's certainly possible. I don't know what path their conversation took. But there's certainly a chance they moved to Father's study to let him in on the discussion. I mean, maybe. <laughs> Blah. Blah. Hi, Leela. Welcome back. I can't imagine that father would willingly let them bring such a detestable topic into his study. You really think so? Well then, there's nothing we can do. I'm sorry, Kenji-san and Kanan-kun, but could you search outside? It wouldn't be that strange for Nissan to suggest they go outside for a walk to cool their heads. Even in this weather, I'll go to father's study. Who knows? They might actually be there after all. Oh, thank you for take a moment. Let me... Let me stitch out. Oh my god. Got a... Oh shoot, I'm so sorry. I hit my microphone. Ah! Ooh. Damn, these women sir are breasting bobbly, huh? <laughs> Is my, is my thing all okay? I think my, my detection stopped. Has it been doing it for very long? Hold on. Let me change cameras. One second. Uh huh. It's not detecting me at all. Give me one second. Might have to be PNG. Also, can't imagine Kinzo letting in people without the symbol into his study, Goda and Kirie. Yeah. Everything sounds okay? Okay. And they all have such thin arms. <laughs> Hold on, let me... Let me restart my VTuber. But anyway, I'll keep reading while it starts up. Evason, I couldn't ask a guest like you to exert herself, so... I will go. I can also wish him a good morning while I'm at it. Shoot. Oh, then I'll leave it in your hands. E, you good? Yeah, my uh, my VTuber Studio stopped uh, detecting my my webcam for some reason. So I'm restarting it right now to see if maybe it'll work now. Let's see. Bring this up. Okay, yeah, it's working now. Okie doke. Okay, 
Okay, we're all good. You're a okay. Welcome back. Thank you. Also, hey, 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 Linux. Been years, but finally new. Wait, really? For reals? Did they announce season two? Though I somehow doubt he'll return your greeting. For reals? Really? It's not an April Fool's joke? I, I know they announced it a while back, but I hadn't seen any news since then. Did they announce an air date? Oh yeah, Panny and Stalkin is coming back apparently. Let me see. Let me see if Twitter lets me look at this. Trigger starting new project titled New Panty and Stalking. Oh, nice. Let's friggin' go. Excited to watch that whenever it comes out. I think you even had that reaction when I told you that a while ago. Yeah. <laughs> Probably. Well, I hope they announce a, an air date soon, then. Let's see, Nesan, have you always been on such good terms with Father? I don't know whether you could call it that. But I am sure that I have gained his trust as the wife of the successor of the Yoshida Mia family. I, I don't know. Your family's pretty misogynistic, so I don't know if that would help. But I'm sure he'll at least answer you, right? I'd like to at least have breakfast with Father. And do you think you could convince him to come down and join us? It seems that he thoroughly despises the rest of us, but I'm sure he'll listen to you if he trusts you that much. Jesus Christ, Eva, she really came to this breakfast meeting swinging. After speaking so boldly, if you're unable to convince Father and come down alone, then I doubt you'll ever be able to claim that you've earned his trust again. <laughs> I am not confident, but I will try. Natsi responded, looking discouraged. I wonder if you managed to reach to the part Umineko Gold covered in their trailer. Oh, really? It's just me or is the music weirdly tense? Yeah, it's always been tense. There's people missing at the moment. Yeah, there's like three people that are missing right now. I know. One, two, three, four. I think, I think it's five people missing actually. <laughs> However, knowing Kinzo's temperament, she had absolutely no confidence in her ability to bring them up. Oh wait, let me see. It was Cross, Ginzo, Rudolph, Kirie. What was it? Yeah, so that's five people. Eva was clearly mocking her, confident that Natsuhi wouldn't be able to get Kinzo to come down. But even so, Natsuhi would lose face the fa Natsuhi would lose face if she gave up, saying it was impossible and letting Eva go instead. Eva not being a bitch for three minutes challenge, impossible. <laughs> Wait, what happened? Can anyone catch me up on speed? Yeah. It's a new day and there's people missing. Yeah. So, Natsuhi's husband is missing. Go to Cheese, the, the chef guy, asshole, is missing. Uh, Battler's mom and dad are missing. And Maria's mom is missing. I wish I punched Rosa before she went missing, but it's fine. Eva's mean-spirited and unreasonable demand made Natsi clench her fist slightly. When Genji realized this, he softly spoke to her over her shoulder. So why is this uh called Umi Neko? So like all of the all of the like uh all of the games by Zero Seven are like uh have a creature as like their their namesake like when so and so cry so like higurashi was like when the when it's not crickets it was, it was something like that when when the crickets cry or something like that and then this is when seagulls cry yeah because the seagulls cry when everyone dies yeah that's why it's called that 
Also, hi, Giga Chad. Welcome, welcome. Yeah, when the Kaikadas cry, that was it. When the Kaikadas cry. And then I think I, I don't know what Kikonia is, but yeah. They're they're like sequels that uh are all around the Ushidomiya family. When Genji realized this, he softly spoke to her over her shoulder. Oh, Kikonia are storks. Oh, okay. Yeah, spooky. How did you pronounce that? Kaikeda? Is it not pronounced Kaikeda? Adam. <laughs> Say Kaikeda, yeah. Am I saying it wrong? <laughs> Haven't heard it like that. Wait, what? I think the Kikonia crying is more figurative than literal. Sick Kaikeda? See Kaikeda? It's not Kaikeda? <laughs> what? My life is in shambles. Okay. Cicada. <laughs> Cicada. You're the cutest little thing. <laughs> I can never say names right, I guess. <laughs> okay, Cicada. Madam, please take this if you would. And this is... Genji handed Natsuhi a sparkling gold key of ornate design. It was the key to Kinzo's study. The study had an auto lock and couldn't be unlocked as long as Kinzo forbade entrance. However, since Genji was especially trusted by Kinzo, he was allowed to carry a key to that door. <laughs> but if this key is used, won't you also receive the blame? When the master is sleeping deeply, simply knocking on the door will not suffice. And it would be more difficult to persuade the master to leave his room if you must talk through the door. Please use this. Genji. Until now, Natsu had thought of Genji as a cold servant who wouldn't do anything for her since he worked directly under Kinzo. But it looked like she would have to alter her understanding of him. She wanted to communicate her gratitude, but by then, Genji had already turned his back on her and was walking down the corridor with Kanon. But as Natsuhi watched them go, the words direct directed at her from behind were sneering. Well, thank you for the head pads. <laughs> thank you for all the head pads, stop like gay and Linux. <laughs> I'm sorry, Elio, but I had to stop myself from laughing out loud while someone was talking to me because of that. <laughs> I'm just ruining your life, aren't I, Dwight? <laughs> well then, you must bring father with you, okay? How'd you pronounce bagel? Bagel? After all, it's his son's precious wife who's asking. I'm sure he'll listen to you. Are you guys gonna tell me I pronounced bagel wrong now? I thought she was holding a knife. <laughs> What's that in your hand? A fan! No! <laughs> We're guests, so we'll just relax here at our leisure. No, you're saying bagel, right? Okay, good. Quit it, Ava. You're taking this too far. And what happened to Shannon? George proposed to her. They're gonna get married. Sorry, not seeing this on, but we're counting on you to deal with father. Without answering, Natsu forcefully spun around on her heels and quickly left that place. Prayer circle for George to be missing. Prayer circle for George to be dead. After all that excitement the previous night, there's no way anyone was going to wake up early. 
George, Johnny, Key, Jessica, and I were snoring loudly on the beds in the cousin room. No! But Maria, who had gone straight to bed without joining in, was completely awake. As she rubbed her sleepy eyes and looked around, she was met with the loud snoring of the other three cousins. Damn it, George is still alive. <laughs> Sorry to hear that, bud. It wasn't meant to be. There are many maids in the sea, but I want Shannon. For a while, Maria had to think about what had happened. Bro literally went, oh no, is Shannon gonna get murdered? Cue George pulling out a ring. Oh no, even worse. <laughs> <laughs> After that, she realized that her mother wasn't with her and she quickly got lonely. Maria left the cousin room, trying to head to the room that had been arranged for her and her mother. This will be my only meme about this, let me see. Because <laughs> I can totally get mispronouncing words. <laughs> Is this a Kikeda? <laughs> Cicada. Cicada. <laughs> Paying no heed to the three who were sleeping soundly, she slammed the door slot. She slammed the door shut. In response, Battler mumbled and rolled over in his sleep, but it wasn't enough to wake him up. Oh, thank you for the head pats, Twy. After a while, Maria returned, once again opening the door with a lively bang. Ugh. When she had left the room, her face had been sleepy, but now that she was back, she looked irritated. After that, she climbed up on Battler's bed, which happened to be the closest, and started yelling and jumping on it like it was a trampoline. awake, Maria moved over to George Aniki's bed and started jumping on them too. Maria when when uh. <laughs> In that manner, the three of us were all greeted with an extremely pleasant awakening. Thanks for waking us up, Maria-chan. You stopped us from sleeping in after that late night. If only you could have been a bit more gentle about it. George Nissan, you really are an adult. I respect that. It'll be seven o'clock soon. Damn, y'all, y'all get up at seven a.m. Jesus. Love Battler immediately playing along first thing. <laughs> he's really nice when he's not being a creep. <laughs> well, it's not really a bad time to wake up. Oh, it is a bad time. I need to sleep in until like twelve. Uh. Uh. Mom is not here. Uh. Aunt Rosa? She wasn't in her room. You him. <laughs> I wonder if she's already woken up and gone to the mansion. Groaning, ooh, ooh, and looking unhappy. I don't consider it a, having a good night's rest unless I wake up at 8 or 9 a.m. Jesus fucking Christ. <laughs> I wish I woke up at 12 p.m. <laughs> I sleep in way too much. She didn't exactly seem lonely because her mother wasn't around. It was more like she was irritated and thrown off balance because her mother wasn't where she'd expected. If we could just tell her where her mother was, that alone would probably calm her down. Exhibit number A, again, that I can definitely tell that Maria has autism. 
But unfortunately, we had no way of knowing where Aunt Rosa was, except that she wasn't here. Anyway, it's time for breakfast, so let's head over to the mansion. That's right. I get up between 9 and 10, but I wake up earlier. Damn. <laughs> I feel like a, a lazy ass. <laughs> no. Maria, let's go to the mansion together, okay? That autistic mood when shit's not where you expect it to be. Yeah, it's not... Uh, what is it called? I, I know that there's like a, a thing that they say. Um... Not a schedule. Is it a schedule? Maybe. Nah, I used to wake up around that time when I didn't work. Yeah, I mostly do night shifts now, so... I'm sure Aunt Rosa will be there too. Yeah, a routine. That was it. A routine. Oh? Uh? Mama's in the mansion? Then, I'll go there. Oh. Uh. Yeah, guess we should go to the mansion. Our parents have probably already gone there. Alright. I think I am... I think I am going to end it here for Umi Nako for the day. <laughs>